Welcome to Course 2, Unit 2, Lesson 1, What is Inflation? In this lesson, we have three lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is, what is inflation? The second lesson objective is, how and why does the government inflate the currency? And lesson objective three is, how does inflation affect bonds and stocks? So let's get started. So I'm sure everyone can remember when they sat down with their grandfather and he said that he could buy a can of soda for five cents or whatever the case might be. And when you hear those stories, this is what we're talking about when we talk about inflation. So why does the government inflate the money? Um, the Federal Reserve will tell you that they inflate the money because it allows them to protect the country from deep recessions or depressions. Um, but another reason that a lot of people really don't talk about is that it serves as an indirect form of taxation. As we get a little bit further into this lesson, uh, you'll understand how that is actually a form of taxation. But the main thing that you need to understand is that inflation occurs because the, the federal government increases the supply of money. So let me give you a quick example. Let's as assume we have a kid here named David and he loves milk. And because he loves milk, he's going to do some chores so he can get some money and go buy the milk. So uh, David goes and works for his parents and he takes out the trash and his trash detail is worth $4. So his parents give him the $4 for uh, taking out the trash. And what you have to understand is that money is nothing more than a symbol of work that's been performed. So David performed some work, his parents gave him some money, and then David can trade that money for the work that somebody else does. Always remember that money is nothing more than a symbol of the work that's been performed. So David takes that symbol of work performed, which was $4, and he goes to the supermarket and he can buy milk in the year 2012, which is the year that he performed that work. Okay, now let's say that David performed the work, he got the $4 from his parents in 2012, but he waited an entire year until 2013 before he was able to go and buy the milk. But now the cost of the milk is $4.12. He still performed the same amount of work, he still did the exact same thing, and in one year he could buy the milk, but in the other year he couldn't buy the milk. And that was because of inflation. So what caused the price of the milk to go from $4 to $4.12? So as we look over here, let's look at uh, year 2012, and we have four people, and we're going to say that these four people symbolically represent all the people across the, our entire country. Okay, and let's just say that the federal government has put $1,000 into this system of people that are working, and that thousand dollars is what they have to use to trade amongst each other. Because remember, that money is just a symbol of their work. And since it's a symbol of their work, they can trade it amongst each other. As they continue to trade the, that thousand dollars, the value of each dollar is dependent on what that person might need, whether it's food, clothes, transportation, or whatever. So let's Let's take these four people and let's go ahead and look at the year 2013. And in this scenario, let's say that a change occurred that the federal government, instead of putting $1,000 between these four people, they put $1,200 between these four people. Same number of people, different supply of money, which is just that symbol of the work that they're performing. So as they're doing their work and there's more money in this system, the value that they're going to charge for services or products that they're creating is going to be higher because there's more money in that system. So let's say that in 2012, whenever there was $1,000 in the system, one of these people could go out and buy milk for $4. But whenever we put $1,200 in the system in 2013, the milk doesn't have to be $4 anymore. It could go up to maybe $4.13 or whatever the case might be it's a higher cost because it's relative to everybody in the system that didn't change in population but the money supply did so that's what the fed is controlling and they're just gradually increasing that amount of money in the system and that's how the money becomes inflated so how does the fed actually control the amount of money in the system now there's many different ways that they can do it they can actually physically print more money but the way that they that they commonly adjust how much money is in the system is through banks so the Federal Reserve sets a thing called the reserve ratio. And in this scenario, we're going to say that the reserve ratio is 20%. So if this man uh, takes $1,000 and he takes it to the bank and he says, hey, I want to save this $1,000, the bank then puts it in his account, his digital account, which he would check on his computer or whatever. And 
the bank then takes that money and then they have the ability to lend it to somebody else, which everyone understands. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the bank, based off that reserve ratio, that's how much money they're allowed to lend out from the one from the money that they've received. So since the bank received a thousand dollars from this customer, they have to keep two hundred dollars on hand and they have the ability to lend out another eight hundred dollars. Okay, so let's see what happens when the bank lends out that eight hundred dollars. So now they lent this eight hundred dollars to this woman here, and let's say she takes the eight hundred dollars and she saves it into the bank. So based off of the, the rules, the second bank, which this woman has gone to, has to hold 20% of that $800. So the bank would hold $160, and they have the ability to lend out $540. Now remember, we only started with $1,000, okay? And now we're already up to another $800 in the system. And now the bank's going to lend out the $540 from that bank. And so what you see is the, this guy saves 540, which means the bank has to keep 108 on hand, and they can lend 432. The next person comes along, and the process goes on and on and on. Okay? So, as you can see, based off that reserve ratio, as that process continues on, $1,000 initially saved in the system actually turns into $5,000. So, you can see that supply of money. If, if we were talking about actual dollars in the system, it's actually, if you take one divided by that reserve ratio, that's going to give you the actual amount that you've got to multiply the base amount of money by. So let's take one divided by the, the 0.2, which is 20%. That gives you a 5. And you'd multiply 5 times 1,000, and that gives you the 5,000. That's how that's calculated. So what happens when that ratio changes? So what would happen if the reserve ratio was 10%? So if we went through that whole scenario again and, and went person by person, $1,000 at a 10% reserve ratio would actually turn into $10,000. Okay, because when we take 1 divided by 0.1, that gives us 10, and we'd multiply 10 by 1,000. So you can see the federal government, when they adjust that reserve ratio from 20% to 10%, they just created another $5,000 in the system if there was only a base $1,000 in there. So they can quickly adjust how much money is in the system just by adjusting that reserve ratio. So this is just one way that the Fed can adjust the amount of money in the financial system. But what we need to know as investors is how inflation or the devaluation of money affects your investments. That's what really matters here is when the Fed adjusts these rates and they, they inflate the money more, how does that affect your bonds and how does that affect your stocks? And that's the question that we really got to understand and, and answer. So let's start with bonds. How does inflation impact your bonds? So let's take this scenario. We have Dan on the left, and he's going to lend $1,000 to Amy. And Amy is basically selling Dan a bond for $1,000. And the coupon on that bond is 5%. Now we're just going to assume that this bond is a one-year bond so that we can kind of see how the inflation impacts it. Okay, so $1,000 to Amy. Amy's going to have to give that $1,000 back after one year, and she's going to have to pay 5% on it. So let's assume that during that year, from 2012 to 2013, 5% inflation occurs during that time frame. So 2013 comes along, and Amy has to return Dan's $1,000, so she gives the $1,000 back to him, and she also has to pay him a $50 coupon, which was the 5% interest on that $1,000. Therefore, Dan has $1,050 in 2013. But due to the 5% inflation, the $1,000 in 2012 money is actually equal to $1,050 in the 2013 money. So those two numbers are equal. So even though Dan might think he made $50, Dan actually made no money because the, the, his buying power is exactly the same in 2013 as it was back in 2012. So how does inflation impact bonds? Well, it drastically in impacts bonds. Um, in order to see what the actual yield is, you have to take the bond yield and you have to subtract the inflation rate, and that will give you the actual bond yield. So in that last scenario, the bond yield was 5%, but the inflation rate was also 5%, so the actual bond yield was 0%. Now, a caveat to this, and I don't really get into it too much here, but you can do more research on it, is something called TIPS.
and that's a treasury inflated protected security. So how does inflation impact stocks? So we know that with bonds, it's not good. So let's see what happens with the stocks. So let's say Dan buys ownership of Apple, which we're just going to say that he buys $1,000 worth of shares for Apple, which is probably going to get him about one and a quarter share at this point. But let's just say he goes and buys $1,000 worth of Apple. Okay? And that happened in 2012. During his ownership from 2012 to 2013, the same 5% inflation occurs. So let's look at this from Apple's standpoint. In 2012, Apple's cost of materials was $100. Their sales price, which is the price that they're going to sell their product for, is $200. And these are just numbers that I'm coming up with to really make all the math really simple. So if it costs them $100 to make the product and they sell it for $200, their net income is going to be $100. So as we look to year 2013, because of the 5% inflation, the cost of their materials went up by 5% and it cost them now $105 to buy their materials. But because of that increase in cost, they are now able to go ahead and sell their, their product at a higher price because there's more money in the system and people can afford that because there's more money in the system. They translate that cost of those materials over to their customers instead of themselves. And so their sales price is now $210 as opposed to $200, which is also a 5% increase. So when we subtract the price from the materials, the net income is $105, which is a 5% increase. So what Apple did from 2012 to 2013 is they automatically adjusted because the cost for them to do business was increased by 5%. So they then translated that cost over to their customer, which was their price was raised by 5%, and then their net income was raised by 5%. So if Dan was going to, back in 2012, Dan was buying ownership of Apple and, and it was trading at a multiple of the earnings, which the net income was $100. And so he purchased his shares for 10, 10 times the earnings, which would be 1,000. As we look at the 2013 numbers, if the multiple was exactly the same, Dan's shares are now worth $1,050. So his shares automatically kept in, in step with the inflation because the net income increased to $105. So how does inflation impact stocks? As a result, stocks with no debt are generally unaffected. So here's a, here's a quick caveat to that. If the inflation moves the price point to, of the product outside of the market's desire, inflation will absolutely impact the stock's performance. But generally speaking, stocks are not really affected all that much by inflation like bonds are. So this concludes course two, unit two, lesson one, what is inflation? We learned about what inflation was, we learned how and why the government inflates the currency, and we learned how does inflation affect bonds and stocks. So I hope the uh, lesson was helpful, and I hope to see you guys in the next lesson.